morning dear students my name is dr shwai mohammad but i'm working as assistant professor in the department of english at institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad today in this video lecture we shall be talking about uh, the topic that is essentials of speaking skill so speaking skill as this forms the this comes or this is the second language skill we have listening then it is speaking then it is reading then it is writing these are four language skills which are required to learn a language to learn any language a person must know all these four skills prior to the learning of a language that is listening speaking reading and writing so this is a kind of a way a pathway to learn a language today in this lecture as i told you the topic is essentials what are the essentials of speaking skill what are the things which one should take care while speaking or before speaking so essentials what are the requirements what are the prerequisites of speaking what us what are the things which a speaker should take care of while speaking or before speaking we shall be talking about that now before going before jumping directly to the essentials it is better to know first what speaking is because we should know what speaking when we know what speaking is then only we should we can know or then then only we can feel the need yes my speaking it should be more effective my speaking should inspire others it should make others spell bound it should impress others so this only can be done when we know what speaking is what is what is the what is the domain of speaking this we should know first coming to the speaking skill speaking is one of the four language skills like we have listening speaking reading writing it's one of the four language skills so we have four language language skills like we have listening speaking reading writing so in these four skills one among them one important skill among them is speaking which we are discussing today it's most frequently used language skill now imagine for one minute you just try to find out ask yourself among these four skills which skill is mostly used by the people or which skill you are mostly using obviously listening is the foundation that is the foundation of all the skills listening without listening every communication is incomplete so that if we really make an honest guess so i think everybody among us may tell it's speaking because just examine yourselves we speak more rather than listening we should give more time to listening rather than speaking but the ground reality is this we speak more rather than listening we speak more rather than read we speak more rather than write so that's why i'm telling you listening is speaking is the most frequently used language skill it's most frequently used everybody prefers to be a good speaker everybody pref nobody prefers to be a good listener very few people are there rare people are there who are good at listening listening has its own own benefits that is a different domain good listening habit can make you the best speaker not good speaker not better speaker but the best speaker good listening habit so but when it comes to speaking everybody wants everybody shows that his or her priority is speaking everybody wants to excel in speaking so that's because of this drive toward speaking has made this speaking a skill which is mostly used which is frequently used by the people then the definition of speaking skill will never be separated from the definition of speaking itself speaking skill means as a language skill and speaking normally a domain a quality an attribute which people are having humans are having so this the definition is one and the same thing speaking as a normal attribute and attribute to every human being and speaking as a language skill they both are one and the same things i would like to take help of bailey an influ influential uh, person and influential writer about speaking 
about linguistics in general in general what he says he says speaking is a productive oral or oral skill consists of producing systematic verbal utterances to convey meaning bell says speaking is a productive oral or i can say simply oral uh, skill what is productive skill as we have writing among these four skills speaking and writing are productive skills we produce information when we speak in the same way we produce information when we write but when we listen we receive information when we read we listen information so writing and speaking they are productive skills reading something and listening these are receptive skills so belly says speaking is a productive skill oral skill it's oral because we speak with our mouth we speak the words we we utter some sounds so he says it consists of producing systematic verbal utterances these utterances are systematic we utter only those utterances only those sounds which contain meaning when we communicate see human beings we are endowed with this quality god has given us the quality that we can produce lot of sounds we can produce those sounds which do not have any meaning and we can produce the sounds obviously which have the meaning so this speaking means to utter the sounds which are systematic in nature which have the meaning and to convey which conveys the meaning so that's what belly knows about speaking he says it is a productive oral skill it consists of producing systematic verbal utterances and these utterances they convey meaning because they are systematic then it means uh, speaking is a productive skill conveying meaning to through utterances the balance the definition i would like to conclude with the sentence that speaking is a productive skill which conveys meaning through utterances so speaking is a productive skill we produce something with the help of speaking and then we convey meaning through these utterances then speaking is the use of language quickly and confidently with few unnatural pauses which is called fluency and the australian linguist david noonan what noonan says speaking is the use of language it is the use of language quickly speaking obviously we are quicker rather than writing when it comes to speaking we speak quickly than we write so he says it is the use of language quickly and confidently with few unnatural pauses or uh, we speak more quickly more confidently with few unnatural pauses and which this this is called fluency he says speaking is the use of language with quick uh, quickly with with some quickness and confidence and that quickness and confidence is called fluency this is what david noonan says then j n chane what chane says speaking is the process of building and sharing meaning through the use of verbal and non verbal symbols in a variety of contexts chane he make it wider he give a wider definition he says it is the process of building and sharing meaning to build when i communicate to you i build meaning i share meaning to you i share some information to you i build some idea i share that idea with you through verbal through the words and through also some non verbal communication through gestures we communicate we speak sometimes with the help of gestures body language postures in a variety of contexts the context may be different contexts may differ so this is what j n chane says about speaking he says speaking is a process by which we build a meaning or we share meaning through verbal and non verbal symbols then so after looking upon all these definitions i would like to say speaking skill is a skill of using language to communicate using verbal or non verbal symbols orally in different context that can be improved through learning language so we can say now speaking skill it is a productive skill 
which is used which uses language to communicate through verbal and non verbal means see i am using right now my language i am using language to communicate to you but this language is supported by non verbal communication i use my hands i use my eye movements i use facial expression i use head movements so this is speaking speaking means to communicate with the help of language that is supported by non verbal communication in different contexts that can be improved through learning language then as a skill speaking is a part of four language skills as i told you it is a part of four language skills and the four language skills are listening speaking reading writing and it's also known as productive skill which i told you where the main point of speaking skill is to communicate orally <clears throat> it's a productive skill where the main aim and function of this productive skill is to communicate orally so this is all about the meaning of speaking let's jump to the importance of speaking what's importance why should we speak speaking skills make us able to communicate effectively we communicate effectively with the help of speaking rather than non verbal language rather than writing written formats we speak more effect we communicate more effectively with the help of speaking then <clears throat> these skills allow the speaker to convey his message in a passionate thoughtful and convincing manner these skills they allow a speaker to communicate or to convey his message in a passionate thoughtful and convincing manner because when we speak the speech it becomes passionate it becomes thoughtful and it's always convincing to communicate with the help of speaking rather than writing rather than with some body posture or body gesture it's always welcome to speak it's always better to speak to communicate with the help of oral speaking because it's more thoughtful it's more convincing then speaking skills help to assure that one won't be misunderstood by those who are listening these speaking skills they help you to assure that you will not be misunderstood by those who are listening to you there are more chances of just of just people there are more chances that people will understand you and there are less chances that people will misunderstand you if you are communicating with the help of speaking because when we write people when we communicate with the help of writing sometimes our sentences may be ambiguous may be mysterious for the readers the readers may not decode the our sentences in such a way as we have encoded the message in those sentences so it would be difficult for the readers to decode our message but it's always helpful for the listeners to decode the message when it comes to oral speaking because it provides an open format for clarification of confusions so that's why i tell you speaking skill it helps to assure that one won't be misunderstood by the listeners because it's it's providing an open format for clarification of the confusions then speaking skills allow us to engage with our peers through discussion of reading thoughts and ideas it allows us to engage in the discussion with our friends with our colleagues the discussion through discussion of readings thought we can discuss upon any topic upon any thought upon any idea with the help of speaking and at the same time it deepens our thinking on a topic and strengthens our arguments by putting forward our own ideas and opinions it deepens our thinking on a topic when we speak when we when we discuss any topic with the help of speaking it deepens our knowledge our thinking on that topic and it strengthens the argument because when people are sharing different ideas with oral communication with speaking so it strengthens the arguments it's not like you are writing your arguments and it reached to me after 5 days then i am writing the reply it reached to you after more 5 days so there is not that strength in the arguments the arguments they, they don't prove themselves very stronger because we are not they are not following a proper sequence 
there is not a unity in that dialogue so that unity can be given to any dialogue with the help of oral speaking then it helps people to work together with other people in our field who share who share our interests to exchange ideas and advance knowledge it helps people to work together with other people in our field so it i can simply say it allows people to work with other people even if they belong to their field or if they do not belong to their own field for what to share interest to exchange their ideas and advance knowledge it helps people then it creates an active and lively space for learning and thinking with the help of speaking a person can learn a person can develop thinking when knowledge can be developed and ideas can be tested and refined it creates that environment where knowledge can be developed and ideas can be tested and refined so these are the benefits of of speaking now let's come to the topic essentials of speaking skill what are the essentials what are the main points which you should think when you speak before you speak or during your speaking number one is the audience is not your enemy one should think about audience you are listening to me you are not my enemy so audience is not your enemy at any cost the reason why many people avoid speaking particularly public speaking or speaking in ge general is because they have a fear of it which is partially fear of an unknown and possibly hostile audience just remember that audience is not them there are many people who fail in speaking who don't like to speak there are people whose whose public speaking or whose speaking skill is very poor because they are having this fear that what is the fear the fear they are afraid of the audience they think that audience is our enemy audience is having very grudge towards us they will check us they will they will pass negative comments negative fee feedback so this is what's a negative this is what what comes in the negative list about speaking a speak a speaker should never fear about his or her audience audience is never your enemy you should enjoy with the audience by sharing your ideas boldly by sharing your thoughts confidently then the second thing is write your speech word for word what does it mean the purpose for writing your speech is not so that you can memorize your speech the purpose is that you can edit it good speaking begins with good writing good writing depends on good editing so one should the another essential for good speaking is write your speech word by word or word for word it's not like you will write down you will write it down you will memorize your speech you will cram your speech it's not that thing so one should write the speech in order to edit the speech and because good writing good speaking it begins with good writing good speaking if you want to be a good speaker you should write good speech first you cannot be a good speaker without good speech so good writing it depends on good editing so one should at the very beginning one should write one speech word for word word by word and this writing is not done in order to memorize the speech it is done in order to make our speech good and good speech cannot be good unless and until we write it first we need to write a speech then only it can be good or good speaking it begins with good writing and good writing it depends on good editing so editing is the main thing one should edit one speech so you read you write your draft then you are reading it you are speaking it and in the next reading you will find there may be something which is redundant which is extra and you may feel there is something important which is missing there so as long as you are proofreading your document you are editing it you will get a very very condensed speech you will get at the end and obviously when you speak that condensed speech you will be called a good speaker because your content also plays a good role in order to make you a good speaker then the next point is bring life to your words 
with colorful images and examples. Choose those words which evoke the audience's own imagination so that they start to experience what you are saying rather than just hearing it. So when you are speaking, you should just make a very selective use of words. Your words should, should bring that color. Your words should create imagination in the mind of listener. Because when you speak, for example, you talk about some natural spot. You should give examples about natural uh, spots like scenic beauties. You can quote Kashmir. You can quote different valleys. You can quote uh, hill stations. Where nature is living there. Where natural spots are there. Where mountains are there. Where woods are there. Where meadows are there. Where water is flowing. So when you use such words, so your audience, your speaker, your listeners, they can create imagination in their mind. So that means they will experience that, 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 uh, that dialogue which you are sharing with them rather than only hearing. So they will not only be hearing you rather than they will experience in that point which you are discussing to them. So the next essential point is for speaking is that is to bring color to your, uh, bring colorful words and images. To bestow color and ima uh, this image to your words. So that your listeners, they may found you very interesting. Then make a point, tell a story. What is this make a point and tell a story? Anecdotes are very important are very useful to elucidate points. Rather than explaining a point to your audience, you need to let them discover it through experiencing it as part of the story you tell. It's better when you are speaking something to the audience. Make audience your, your, your asset. Let them take part in your conversation. Make them main characters of your conversation. Tell them some stories of their own. Because when, when you indulge your audience in your dialogue, when your audiences, they are a part of your dialogue, there are chances that, that you will be a good speaker. They will listen to you carefully. So this is another essential element which, uh, which is required in order to be a good speaker. Then next is emotions. Choose words which not only create an image, but which, are, which at least evoke the emotions. And when people empathize with you, they are more willing to accept your message that you want to convey in your speech. We should not only, not only awake, we should not only uh, just evoke the imagination in, the, in our listeners, rather we should create some, we should evoke some em emotions in them. Because see, at the end of the day, we all are human beings. We are embodiments of both emotions and reason. Emotion and logic. We have both heart and mind with us. Heart is for these emotions. And mind is, it's for reason. Somebody has done a crime. And he has been sentenced for death. Or life imprisonment. Your heart is telling, hey, give him one more chance. Give her one more chance. So that he or she can just mend or refrain from that mistake. But your reason or logic is telling you, no, there are rules. He has done a mistake. She has done a mistake. He or she has to face the sentence. So we are embodiment of both these things. We have heart and we have reason. We have mind. So every listener who is listening to you is also an embodiment of emotions. So if you evoke those emotions in them, you will be accepted. You can better convey the message. Because the audience will, will have a sympathy towards you when, you when you evoke emotions in them. It's not like you have to show them, I'm a poor man, I don't have money, have some mercy on me. No, it's not like that. It is regarding your content, you can create a story where you can evoke emotions among your audience so that they can accept you. So these are some essential points which we require. Which, which we require before the speech, before uh, having any speech or before delivering any speech, we need to go through these essentials. And there is one more thing that is don't underestimate the power of laughter. 
laughter. What is this laughter? It is to laugh. We should not underestimate the power of laughter. What does it mean? When we laugh, we relax. Obviously, when we laugh, we relax. And when we relax, our minds are more receptive to learning. And obviously, when we relax, our minds are more receptive. For example, you are, you are confused, you are frustrated, you are tense. You don't, you cannot listen people that time. Your mind cannot be open to all the, all the inputs. Makes you a little bit tired, you are confused, you are disturbed, you want a separate space, you want peace, you want silence. Now when you are relaxed, your mind is relaxed, you can, you can receive anything, you can learn anything that time. So that relax, relaxation, that peace, it can come to your mind by laughing also. Laughing is not the only source to find peace, to be relaxed, but it's one among the different sources. So many people don't think they can get people to laugh because they think they are not able to tell a joke. There are many speakers who feel, yeah, it's difficult to, to them, for them to make their audience laugh because they cannot crack jokes. A professional joke teller is a comedian. You don't have to be a comedian to make people laugh. Just ask yourself what makes you laugh. Obviously. Comedians make people laugh when you are delivering a speech on some serious or grave topic. You cannot play the role of a comedian on the stage. But you should ask yourself what makes you laugh. Sometimes it may be a small joke. Sometimes it may be a small, small anecdote in some other sense. A small light, uh, light example. A funny example. So if you are able to make your audience, to make your listeners laugh, that means you are giving them the space, that means to relax their minds. And when they relax their minds, they are more receptive in nature that time. At that time, you can make them understand your point. Then don't tell us, take us. One more thing, which is quite different, it seems. What is this don't tell us, but take us? Rather than describing the incident like a reporter, take us and as an eyewitness to the event, by acting it with moments, gestures, vocal inflections. Now you are sometimes you, as a speaker, you may, you are describing any incident. It's not good to be a news reporter who is describing each and every incident. Rather it is to just give some eyewitnesses, show some eyewitnesses by your body language by your gestures, vocal inflections, by rising tone, falling tone, like this. Oh, I saw an accident. You know, three people died there. Oh my God, that was the worst accident I have ever seen in my life. So when you act like this with, the, with your vocal inflections, so you make that incident more graphic and more, uh, more, uh, more graphic to the people, more waved to the people. So it is to take us, so you are not telling, you are taking your audience to that place. So this is also needed. This is also one of the essential points which you need uh, before you speak anything. Then there are some basics. They also come under the essentials of speaking. I wrote the basics. Every speech is incomplete without these basics. Vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, fluency. These four basics. As I told you, every Every uh, this speech is incomplete without these four basics. Let's find out what these four basics are. One is vocabulary. I would like to write a line here. Knowledge of words. Somebody has rightly said, knowledge of words is a gate of scholar. Scholar, a knowledgeable person, a person who is doing research, a person who has mastery over a subject, a person who is more knowledgeable than others. Knowledgeable people, they are called scholars. Now, in order to be a scholar, knowledge of words is required. It's considered as the gate. In order to be a scholar, you need to cross the gate. And the gate is knowledge of words, that's vocabulary. One cannot be a scholar if one is not having good vocabulary. 
So vocabulary is required. That's what is also that this is also required uh, for speaking skill. I wrote this line in order to make you know what vocabulary is and how important it is. So to develop the speaking skill, one need to have strong vocabulary. It's it's always needed to have strong vocabulary in order to be a good speaker. Without vocabulary, without knowledge of words, what will you speak to the people? When you do not know the exact terms, when you do not know the exact words, you will always be in trouble when you speak to people. The more words we have, the more the stronger speaking will skill will be. Obviously, quite easy to understand. When you have enough words inside you, you can speak more because you have words inside you. And when you speak more, your speaking skill will be strong. It will be effective. It will be improved. So speaking skill is, uh, vocabulary is needed in order to make our speaking skill effective. The best way to improve vocabulary is to read and to make a note of new words. <clears throat> what is the best way to improve our vocabulary? It is to read and make note of new words, to read new books. And wherever we are confronting new words, it's always better to note down new words. Because we need to remember these new words. We need to retain them in our memory. Not only for the retention, but we need to use them in our daily conversation wherever they are used, wherever they are required. And when we have, as I told you, good knowledge of words, obviously we will become good speakers. Grammar. Second thing is grammar. You may think that grammar is something we only require for speaking. Uh, for writing, but it includes various important areas of spoken language, such as understanding tenses, structure. Grammar is not something which we only require for writing. There is a very bad concept, a misconcept about grammar. That is, it is required only for written language. No, that's not the case with grammar. It's also required for spoken language. For example, I would like to tell you an example. I am teaching. I was teaching or if I write I taught. In these two sentences there is only one word different. Okay, tell me I am teaching and I was teaching. Are these two sentences similar? Yes, no, they are not similar. So they are different. One talks about present progressive and there is past progressive or past continuous. So there is only one word is changed, aim and was. Or I would like to give an example. I eat. I ate. This is present indefinite. This is past indefinite. So if I speak to you, like right now I am teaching you, I can, I should Talk in present continuous. I can show this action in the present continuous. I should say, I am teaching to you. Now, if I tell you, I was teaching to you, what do you understand? Sir is talking about some past time when he taught, when he taught us. If I speak to you, I was teaching you. I should say, I am teaching you. So, grammar is not, which is only required for written language. It is required for spoken language in order to know the tenses, in order to know the sentence structure. So sentence structure, for example, Rahul is going to market to buy vegetables. There is a proper structure followed in the sentence. We have subject, we have predicate, we have object. If I tell you market going is to Rahul, vegetables buy, it has the whole meaning. All the words are used, but it is senseless. There is no structure in the sentence. Proper structure is not there. So we require grammar equally for spoken language as well. So that's why grammar is also an essential ingredient for speaking. It's not like grammar is only required for, for writing only. No, that's a wrong concept about grammar. Grammar is also required for speaking as well. Grammar helps us to convey information in a way that the listener will recognize and understand clearly. Again, I'm telling you, I was teaching you. What will you think? Sir had taught us somewhere in the past. 
but I haven't taught you in the past. So wrong information I have given to you because of improper use of wrong use of grammar. So when we use grammar in our speaking, we are we pro we prove ourselves that we can be understood clearly and our message can be recognized clearly. Then we have the next that is fluency. What is fluency? Fluency in speaking is something that naturally develops. It can be achieved by practicing speaking every day. Fluency, how fluent you are, what sort of speed you are when it comes to comes to reading. Uh, sorry, uh, speaking. So fluency it comes to you uh, when you practice speaking. It's not something you know language and you are sleeping at home. You are speaking once, twice a day. You are speaking with lot of pauses. Like I'll give an example. For example, I have to tell you, I'm your teacher. I teach you English. So when I speak like this, I'm your teacher. I teach you English. So there is a fluency, proper fluency. It's not more quicker so that you cannot understand. It's not so slow so that you find it difficult to understand. It's like, it's not like this. I am your teacher. I teach you English. So this is not a proper fluency. So there must be a fluency and this fluency it can come to you when you speak. Then. Fluency is the ability to hear words and understand them straight away. What is fluency? To hear words and understand them straight away. As long as you hear words, you are understanding them quickly. That's fluency. Then, reading widely is a good way to improve fluency as it introduces readers to new vocabulary and reinforces their knowledge of spoken language. Reading widely to read widely, it is also a good way to improve fluency. Because when you read, when you read many, many books, these books, they may introduce new vocabulary to you. And it will strengthen your knowledge of spoken language. Your knowledge of spoken language will be strengthened. Because as long as you read, you come up with new words, you read quickly. And when you read quickly, obviously you will speak quickly. So this is the next uh, essential for for speaking. Then we have the last one among this in this whole set that is pronunciation. Understanding how to correctly pronounce words is another important element of speaking. Another important essential of speaking is pronunciation. If your pronunciation is faulty, your li listeners will not listen you carefully. You may be providing false information because your listeners they are not understanding you. For listen, you are speaking listen. People may not understand you. It's not listen, it's listen. If I tell you, listen me carefully, you may be thinking, hey, what sir is speaking? What is this listen? That's wrong. So it's always listen. So when you are having faulty pronunciation, you may not be understood by your listeners carefully. We learn how to pronounce words by listening to those around us, such as our parents, friends, and teachers. How can we learn pronunciation? When we listen others, our parents, our teachers, our friends, those who are having good pronunciation. It's not like you are listening to someone who doesn't know about the pronunciation and you can claim, yes, I know everything because I have caught the words from this person. No. The people who are trained in pronunciation, who know what exact pronunciation is, who have the phonemic knowledge, so we can inculcate, we can learn pronunciation by listening our elders, parents, teachers, friends. And a lot of this comes from phonemic awareness. It can also be understood by phonemic awareness if we have the phonemic awareness. This involves understanding the small units. It means to understand the phonetic alphabet of a particular language which we are speaking. So pronunciation can come by knowing phonemic alphabet, by knowing, by having phonemic awareness, by having the awareness of all the sounds by which a language is made up of. So this is all about this fourth skill. I hope you all have understood it. Here I would like to stop, um, finish my lecture. There is the set of some books here in the references. If you want some extra information about this topic, you can search these books. They will help you to gather some more information about the topic. So this is all for today.
थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग मी केयरफुल थैंक यू वंस अगेन लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब हिट द बेल आइकन फॉर मोर अपडेट्स